How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Before we get to the video, I have a quick disclaimer. This video was shot. It took me a very long time to shoot. And then once I got done, I realized that the top of my head is cut off in a large part of the video. Now, I could have redone this, but I felt like whenever I redo a video and re-record, it's never as good. The quality of the content is never as good as I make right at the beginning. So I want to keep the video. Now, I'll apologize for the top of my head being cut off, but I think the value really comes from the information that's given. So definitely stay through to the end. Uh, if you want to help out, I am recording this on my cell phone, which is hooked up to a very cheap O light. So if you want to help out and hit the like button, hopefully I can, you know, get a stand that will actually hold my phone in the same place every time instead of moving and then causing my head to be chopped off. If you don't want to see me with my head chopped off, hit the like button. Thanks. <laughs> How's it going everyone? It's Sam. If you haven't seen my channel before, I go over finance, investing, stock, and budgeting videos, mostly focusing on stock and investing videos. Now, I really like talking about anything finance, so we're going to change it up a little bit, and we're talking about Dave Ramsey. So before we do that, I want to say I think Dave Ramsey has done a lot of good for a lot of people. He's had one of the biggest audiences over the biggest amount of time. Of course, now there are several finance YouTubers that are growing a lot faster and are growing to be even more relevant than Dave Ramsey. But Dave Ramsey has been around for a very long time, since really before I was born, I believe, and has really helped a lot of people become financially independent, helped a lot of people get out of debt. So I want to say that right off the bat that I hold no ill will towards Dave Ramsey. I will say though, some of his views are very specific to people that are in debt. Some of his views are a little bit aged, I think. So I want to give all the disclaimers that I really like him uh, or I like what he's done, but I wouldn't necessarily follow Dave Ramsey if you were trying to become as wealthy as possible and do it really as smart as possible, really make your money work for you as opposed to doing the steps that he gives out, which aren't necessarily the best way or the quickest way or even the most efficient way at gaining wealth. So I'll go over that, but I want to talk about his baby steps and compare them to kind of my own baby steps that I've created that I think are going to help you a lot faster to reach financial independence, to reach a point where you're not in debt compared to what Dave Ramsey says. Now, before we do this, if you don't mind hitting the like button, it really helps, especially with all the people that I know that will dislike this because I'm disagreeing with some of the stuff that Dave Ramsey says. Also, if you want, you can use those links below. There are links to a couple different investing platforms. One is M1 Finance, and I really like using them. They're my favorite long-term investing application. And there's also one to Weeble where if you deposit $100, you can get two free stocks, one worth up to $1,400. So even if you want to just do that to get the free stocks, I totally understand, but it really helps out the channel. So about eight months ago, I made this video, Dave Ramsey's Advanced Baby Steps. And this is at a time where I think I had four subscribers. And as you can see here, 10 views, two likes, one of which is mine. So I I feel like I've come a long way. Hopefully I have, and hopefully my production value is a lot better. Back then I was just working upstairs um, and there's a ton of background light and it was really weird. The setup that I had, I was just using my computer and my face looks completely dull. So hopefully I'm a little bit more energetic than I was before. We're going to go over it. So Dave Ramsey's top seven baby steps. So he gives seven steps that will hopefully take you from where you are to becoming really wealthy, really well off and giving back to the community. So his baby step number one is to save a thousand dollars for your starter emergency fund. So I agree with this and I'm going to show you my exact steps. I have them laid out in a similar fashion, but I like the fact that he is saying that you have to save a certain amount of money. Now, without going into mine too much, I would like to see it based on expenses instead of just a random number because if you spend $200 a month and you're living at home as like a teenager, you're going to have a different amount of money that you should save compared to someone that spends $100,000 a year or $8,000 a month. $1,000 doesn't really do much for them. Now, number two, they say pay off all debt using the debt snowball. So if you don't know how this works, what the debt snowball is, is you take your smallest amount, so the smallest balance that you have, and you pay off that debt first, 
then you use that amount to pay to the next debt and the next debt and the next debt. I have a different way that saves you a lot more money that I'll talk about. It's called the debt avalanche, but I'll go into that during mine again. Baby step number three, save three to six months of expenses in a fully funded emergency fund. So this is more ways talking about the hundred or the thousand dollars is more just the initial amount. So I, I get that. He's saying that you should build up a little bit. And then later on, once you have some of your debt paid off, then you can save three to six months. And then he says, invest 15% of your household income in retirement, save for your child's college fund, pay off your home early, build wealth and give. So just looking at this up front, these are really good steps. If you want to become wealthy and you do these, you're going to become wealthy. So the question is, is it the most efficient way to do it? First of all, I don't love the fact that he's saying to pay off all your debt before you have more money. So before you have more than $1,000, you pay off all your debt. If you have, I'd say some small student loans that are worth, I don't know, 4%, let's say that the APR is 4% on them. I don't think you have to pay those off right away. I mean, you can write off some of the interest on your taxes. I don't think that's good to pay off before you save the three to six months of emergency fund. Let's say you have some car issue come up and you have to put down money for a new car. And let's say you don't have the money because you only have $1,000, but um, maybe it's something else where you can't easily fund it with a loan or something. I would have more money than $1,000 because you might have to be forced to you know, use a credit card to pay for that if you only have $1,000. So I'd be cautious. I'd actually put this three to six months up earlier. I don't think 15% is enough for your household income. So that's great actually if you wanna retire at a normal time. But let's say you're starting late. Let's say you're starting at 40 and you haven't started investing. Or let's say you wanna retire early, I would bump this up. So again, if you're starting from an early age or you already have retirement savings or you love your job or anything like that, this is probably a good amount to save. I would like to see up higher. I am going to save higher than this throughout my career. The other thing is save for your child's college fund. That's really nice. But I kind of think that one of the best things you can give your children, and as a person that had to pay for my own college, I really think one of the best things that you give your children is the fact that you can spend time with them. So if you're financially independent and maybe you're still not able to pay for your college fund yet or your kid's college fund, I think that's okay. I think that the parents being financially independent is more important than them paying for the college because I think a lot of people don't use that money wisely in college. They drink it away or they party it away and they waste money. The other thing is paying off your home early. I would probably invest more before I'd pay my home off early just because you get a greater return, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Your expenses are lower, your taxes are lower, and then build wealth and give. So that's great. After you're at a point where you can give away, I think that's awesome. Now, I will say, again, these are great steps, but I think I've come up with a little bit faster way for you to become wealthy and this isn't gimmicky or anything like that but i think that it's better overall so this is the financial friend baby steps <laughs> so baby step number one log how much you spend over a one to three month period i get that this kind of sucks a lot of people don't want to have to write down all their expenses especially if there's a significant other and then there's kids and then you have to worry about logging everything but spend you know five minutes a day spend just uh, five or 10 minutes a week doing this, just write it down, know what you spend because a lot of people have no idea what they spend. So that's number one. That's an easy one. You really don't have to get down number one before you start step number two. I would just start on step number one and go right into step number two. I would say to get a credit card to improve credit. Now, Dave Ramsey doesn't believe in credit cards. He doesn't think that they're useful. He doesn't think that you should use them. He cuts them up. So I would totally disagree with this. I think credit cards are very important, especially at a young age when you don't have a lot of credit history. It is nearly impossible to get a mortgage if you have no credit history. Actually, it really is impossible. You have to have good credit. And if you've never taken a loan out for anything, the credit cards are some of the easiest ways to get credit. So I think you should definitely sign up for a credit card and use it wisely, pay it off every month, even if you want to pay it off multiple times a month, never miss a payment and always keep your utilization. So 
the amount that they allow you to take and the amount that you actually spend on the card, um, keep that low, hopefully between 25 and 30% or less. So if you have a $1,000 credit limit, don't put more than 250 to $300 on the card because that messes with your score too. So get that credit card, improve your credit. It's going to help you farther down the road. So when you apply for a mortgage or uh, some other type of credit, maybe an auto loan or student loans, maybe you go back to school, uh, hopefully you can get a much lower rate and save a lot more money. I think that that is a great way and a free way to save a lot of money that is really very little risk, really zero risk as long as you pay it off and just treat it as a debit card. So go spend money on it and then pretend that it's out of your accounts. You don't have the $50 you just spent on clothes anymore even though it's on the credit card and it's still in your bank account. So if you guys want links to some of my favorite cards below, I have a couple of cards that I use and you can use those links below. You get some sign up offers at the time of this recording. I believe it's a $200 bonus if you put $500 in the card in the first three months. So this is the exact card that I have and you know it gives you rewards. It's through Chase. It's really my favorite card out there. Um, you can use the points for a variety of different reasons. Even just getting cash back, you can save yourself a couple percent off the sales price, but definitely do your own due diligence on that. By the time you see this, it might have changed the offer. Okay, baby step number three, invest up to company match. So before I even save two months of expenses, I think you need to save for the company match. And if you have a 401k, you probably know what I'm saying. A lot of the time with companies, they will, if you put money in a 401k, they will match up into a certain percent. So for my company, I put in 4% of my salary, they match 4%. So I actually get 8% into that 401k of my salary, but I only have to supply half of that. So that is basically a guaranteed 100% return, even if you didn't want to invest it, which I think you definitely should. Even if you didn't want to invest it and you just kept it in cash, you can take that money out eventually and you've doubled your money. So I would invest to the company match. Dave Ramsey believes that you should pay off a lot more of your debt before you even do that. I've heard him say that you should pay off, I think it was like a 20% interest rate or 15% interest rate before getting your company match. I totally disagree with that. I think that is the most important thing. I would take 26% credit card debt and still invest to the company match. So personally, I think that you're missing out a lot if you're not getting this match. The next thing is to save at least two months of expenses. Now I start this because everyone's different Based on your situation, how comfortable you are, do you have investments that are in easily accessible places like a brokerage account? Do you have lines of credit through your home? Um, I think that it's going to be different for everyone. Now, another reason that I say two months as opposed to three to six like Dave Ramsey says is I want you to start paying off the debt that's over 7% interest rate. So I've actually known someone in my personal life that had about $30,000 that was just sitting in a savings account while they had over $30,000 in credit card debt and they wanted to keep that money there just in case they had an emergency. Now to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I would rather use that money, put it towards my credit cards, now I have to pay the interest and then if there is some emergency, I just put it back on the card. So if I have to go back to credit cards, I'll have to do that but I'd rather not pay the interest in the short term. So that is another reason why I say just two months of expenses. If you have something like a 20% interest rate on a credit card, I would pay that off before I had more money saved up because the worst case scenario is you hold the money on the sidelines while you're getting credit card interest. So pay off your student loans or pay off credit cards, pay off crazy auto loans that's over 7%. After that, when it's between five and a half and 7%, I would kind of consider whether you want to pay off that debt or keep it around. For example, I have about 4.6% interest on some of my student loans, but I can write it off on my taxes. It's at a very long loan life, so I have about 20 years to pay it off. So it's very small amount. It's a very small amount of my monthly expenses. So I'm not really worried about that, especially because I can write it off, like I said, and it's a locked in rate. I think I can get a higher return in the stock market. Now the next step is baby step six, invest at least 20% of your income, maxing out the Roth IRA first, then the HSA, then the 401k. So I have a specific order here, but this is 
more geared this order is more geared to I, I would say younger individuals so Roth IRA if you think you're gonna get paid a lot more in the future I would say start with the Roth IRA if you think you're gonna get paid about the same then I would start with the HSA and then the 401k and then the Roth IRA the reason I say this is the Roth IRA is nice because you can take money out or at least the money that you put into it pretty easily and over time it's great if your income increases and you're being taxed more because you've already paid taxes on this amount but each of these serves a different purpose you know definitely consult with other advisors or you know do your own research to figure out which one makes the most sense for you and your trajectory at work and how much you get paid and what part of your life you're in but i would say invest at least 20 percent of your income and the reason i say this is if you want to hit early retirement this is a great number if you start from zero and invest a thousand dollars a month let's say you make just sixty thousand dollars a year which i say just but let's say you make sixty thousand dollars a year pretty average as a household in america if you invest 20 percent of that that's a thousand dollars a month if you do that over 28 years you should be able to retire without any government assistance assuming that your expenses stay about the same so what you really need is about 1200000 based on the 4% rule, which is a topic for a totally different video. But based on that rule, you should be able to save and invest about $1.2 million over 28 years. So if you start at age 22, you should be able to retire by the time that you're 50. So I really like this number. I really like 20%. It gives you a little leeway too if you hate your job or something like that and you just want to quit. You've already been able to save up more. I personally am going to try to invest a lot more than 20%. I'd like to hit closer to 50% and even past that if possible because the years to retirement just cut down dramatically. The next step is just hitting financial independence. So after you're able to save 25 times wherever your annual expenses are, you should be able to retire. And this is a great situation to be in. At this point, you can do whatever you want. You can spend your time how you want. And then that brings us to step number eight, which is use your resources however you want. So if you want to give them away, if you want to give away your time or your money, definitely go do it. But this gives you freedom to do whatever you want. Now, the main differences, I think, between mine and Dave Ramsey is I think you should invest more. So you should invest a higher percentage and you should invest before you pay off really low interest rate debt. So some people like paying off their mortgage. I don't have that even included in here because right now I've seen people get 2.5% interest rates. I would not pay that off. I would definitely invest before I'd pay that off. So I would even retire with that baked into my budget. That is about the lowest amount that you'll ever have to pay on debt ever. And I'm okay with holding that debt. I think that my investments will pay dramatically more than that rate and I am okay with holding it, like I said. So let me know what your thoughts are below. And I appreciate you guys taking a look at both the investing apps down there in the description and then also the credit card too. So thank you guys for doing that. And then also there's a link down there if you wanna refinance your loans. I actually refinanced recently with Credible and got a $300 gift card, so that was really nice. But if you wanna use that too, the link's down below. I appreciate it so much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for hitting the like button and for watching the video. And please hit that subscribe button too if you want. This might date me depending on when you see this because these Dave Ramsey videos typically do well for a very long time. But we're just approaching 4,900 subscribers, which is awesome. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and liking the videos. I usually do more investing type videos than this. So if you want to start investing, definitely follow the channel. At the time that I'm recording this right now, I've been doing a weekly dividend series where I invest in individual stocks each week. So definitely check those out if you haven't seen them already. And I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.